All right, Sprite Kid fans. So uh, where we last left off with this game, uh, this is what it does. Um, remember, we were putting together an air hockey game. I pieced this together from our blank Sprite Kit template. And so right now, we have this thing that is not super good. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but hitting the goal, try to do it. Again, even virtual sports you need to work on this. See, it doesn't actually trigger um, anything to happen. So what we would like to have happen, uh, two things. Number one, we want to make it so that when that puck, oh, look, there it goes, right there. When that puck hits the goal, we want the score label right here to go up by one. And uh, the other thing that might be nice to do is to make it so that this, this weird physics thing that, that happens, it's too buggy and it's, it's annoying. It doesn't really act like we'd expect it uh, to for a real air hockey game. So I'm going to show you in this video how to do some of the, uh, some of the contact events that I've mentioned during class um, and show you how to set that up, give you a little bit of the background of how it works. And we're going to use that to make it so that when there is a contact between the puck and the goal, that goal, that uh, score goes up. So to start, um, I'm going to clean up some things uh, that I had done here, and I'm going to make some categories for the different objects that are in my game. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a category for the puck. So I'm going to do puck category, make that a u int 32, and I'm just going to give it this binary number. Oops, that should be the sign. And clean up the white space. Great. And I'm going to create another category for the goal. So I'm going to call this the red goal category. Um, this is the red goal. And so I've made a category for the puck and for the red goal to be able to track uh, interactions between the two. I want to give these different categories. And so uh, if you look at this, I have, uh, this is a UN32. I am using four bits. Bits are either zero or one. Um, and this is the binary system. So each arrangement of these will result in a different uh, category. And I can have up to 32 of these categories in my game. So in making these have different categories, I'm going to be able to check to see that there are interactions between anything with those categories. So the next thing to do is uh, I'm going to add to the red goal sprite a physics body, which it doesn't currently have. And the reason I want to do that is that the physics body has all of this logic built in to detect contacts with other sprites. So I'm going to add that in. So red goal sprite dot physics body, which right now doesn't exist. And I'm going to set it equal to a new SK physics body. And I'm going to use uh, the version of this that uses the rectangle of size. And I'm going to get the size of the red goal from the red goal sprite dot frame dot size. And so that's going to create a physics body that has the same shape as the red goal sprite. The second thing I'm going to do is to the red goal sprite, I'm going to give it on that physics body a category, a category bit mask. And uh, this gives the physics body whatever category I want it to have. So I'm going to set that equal to the red goal category. And I think that's ready to go. So my red goal now has a category attached to the physics body. Let's do the same thing for the sprite. Now I'm going to remove this, which I had in there before. And uh, I'm now going to do dot category bit mask. And I'm going to set this equal to the puck category. Um, because I want, uh, I want it to have a separate category than the, the goal. Okay, so I've given those two things. 
Everything else is looking pretty good. I'm going to leave everything else the way it is for now. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create. Uh, I'm, I want to make it so that the red goal sprite responds to contact with the puck sprite. So I'm going to set that property on the red goal sprite. Red goal sprite dot physics body, because this is attached to the physics body. Um, dot contact test bit mask. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this, this little operator that I didn't explain to you in class. Um, but the idea here is I want to know when the red goal sprite contacts the puck category. Now, I don't do equals here, which I think I had in some of my examples incorrectly. I use um, this right here, it's a little bit like this operator. When you do plus equals, it means take the test bit mask um, it, and, and set it equal to the current bit mask and then some operation being performed on it. So when I do this, I am essentially saying that this mask is equal to the con the, this entire thing, red goal sprite dot physics body dot contact bit mask plus the or operator with the pug category. So I am saying make the contact bit mask be equal to all of these things. Um, but we're getting an error. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on there. I don't want to use that. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the contact test bit mask, and I'm going to use this operator that does the same thing um, with the puck category. And so this means that if the red goal sprite contacts anything that has this puck category, we're going to get an alert about it. Okay. Uh, and so now, so far nothing is going to happen. Um, let's go down to our did begin. I'm going to leave all of this the same for now. Uh, and I'm going to write some new code that's going to use the physics engine to manage the contact. So here's what I'm going to do. And this is going to look similar to some of the example code that I've given you in class. So I'm going to do let contact type. So I want to know what kind of contact has occurred. And I'm going to make this contact dot body A dot physics body um, dot category bit mask and I'm going to use the or operator on that and I'm going to do that with body B. Okay so uh, inside this function we have a contact event. A contact event is always between two objects, two sprites, and the contact has a body A and a body B, which represent those two sprites. And what have I mixed up here? Contact dot body A dot ah, um, node dot physics body. That might be what I need to do to fix that. Okay, I think I have it. Uh, here we go. Um, we are making sure, using this exclamation point for all of these, we're making sure that the node exists and the physics body exists. We are promising Swift that these two things exist, which should make sense because we are, we've just had a collision event. So really, if uh, what we're doing is promising Swift using these exclamation points that this is happening. Um, don't worry too much about that. Um, we'll just deal with that. Um, and so I'm going to define another type. I'm going to say um, I'm going to create puck hit goal as the event when we have a uh, the puck sprite dot physics body dot category hit mask. And so this means, I'm going to just copy that over, and this is going to be red goal sprite 
same thing. And so I'm defining these two constants to basically say that uh, these are, um, this is the type of the contact that has, has occurred. And I'm defining this category to say this is a contact between a puck sprite and a red goal. And let's have it check my optionals. We'll do that. I think everything else should be okay. That's right. You know it has a physics body. All right. Great. And so if contact type, so this is saying the type of contact that occurred between body A and body B is equal to puck hit goal. That's what we've set up here, meaning we have some interaction between these two sprites if this happens. Um, before we go into changing the score, let's just print something in the console so we know that it's happened. And we'll just say that it was a score. All right, let's give it a shot. So, give it, a, give it a little hit. And we just need to make it so that it hits the goal. Oh, man. It's almost like a real game. And you're all watching this and seeing. I'm not great at it. There we go. So, notice that it just hit the goal a couple times. I think I saw it at least one, and it says score. So, we know now that this is working the way we want it. So instead of just printing score, uh, let's review what we are using to store that score. So if we go way back up here and we go to the score label, the score label is a sprite that is attached to the red player sprite. Um, so we need a place in our game where we can store the score of our game. Um, so let's make this a var because the score is going to change. And we'll call this the red score make an integer and start it equal to zero. Okay, and so uh, now that we have that, uh, this is pretty simple. All we're going to do is that when this happens, if the contact type is the puck hitting the goal, we're going to do two things. We're going to take the red score, and we're going to add one to it. There's that, that uh, operator there. And I also need to take, take the text of that red score, red player score label, and I'm going to change its text. And so I'm just going to make it a string, and I'm going to make it so that that value is always updated to be the red score. So let's see what happens now. Looks good to me. Let's run the game. In. I'm just going to give it a light nudge, vertical nudge, toward the goal. So close. So maybe I can just nudge it. There we go. So you notice that that, that, that actually worked. You see that the score went up. Um, but you also may have noticed something else that's a little bit of a problem, and that is that it bounced from my sprite. Oh, there we go. It's not very fast. Maybe it'll do it again. So it hits the goal. That goes to three. Give it a nudge. And you notice, oh, there are a couple things happening there. That goal is moving. And I don't think we want that goal to move. Oops. So that's another problem to solve. So we have a couple things going on. Number one, we want to take that red player goal and make it so it is not dynamic, so that the goal doesn't move in response to a collision. That is a simple thing to fix. So we'll go there. Red goal has a physics body now, which is why it's responding. So let's make this red goal sprite that physics body. Let's make its uh, is dynamic property to be false. So now that goal won't be moving. But it's a little bit of an issue that the puck is 
uh, hitting the goal multiple times and is just scoring off of the blue player sprite. You know, it's good for the red player, but it's not exactly not exactly very fun. So uh, here's here's the plan. When this collision occurs, um, we're going to increase the score. Um, and you might be inclined to say instead of uh, like what normally happens is that the puck disappears. So let's let's do that. Um, let's make it so that puck sprite. We're going to use this command remove from parent the moment that happens. And so now you'll see. Hopefully we have fixed both of those problems. that, give it a nudge, and there we go, so it hits, and it disappears, and that becomes one. Okay, pretty cool. Um, but now, clearly, our game is over, and that is boring. So what we will again do, now that we have removed it from the parent, uh, the sprite isn't actually gone. It's still in the game. And so if we want it to appear again, we can just use self.addChild to add it back into our game. Um, so let's do this. Let's set its position uh, to be somewhere, um, maybe in the middle. So maybe at 250. So we'll give it x is 250 and y is 250. Let's put it in the middle. And let's add it back into the game. So uh, let's do puck sprite. We're going to add that sprite back in to the game, make it visible. Right. Again, this is so not fun. I don't. I don't really understand. We're going to fix that next. So I'm just going to make this very unrealistic. Touches the goal, and there it is. It's right back there. We can do that again. And so now we can see that it, uh, the number is going up. The sprite is going somewhere. Um, I guess I might maybe maybe 200. 200 is in the middle. I might have forgotten how big this game is. Um, but what we should now do, because everything else is working well, is let's adjust this interaction uh, that, that right now I'm using two different methods to kind of manage everything. Um, I have this code that I wrote before to try to make it so that the, the puck bounces off the red player. That is a physics interaction. So let's use the physics engine to manage that instead of doing this the way we did up here. So this, of course, means I need to add another category. So you're going to see me go through this whole process again. So I'm going to add a category. Um, I'm going to do a, a player category this time. Do it 32. And I'm going to make this different from the other one. So I'm going to do 0100. Make all three of these different. Uh, so I've made a player category. I also need to tell the physics engine to pay attention to collisions between the puck and the red player. So I'm going to go to the puck sprite now, and it has a physics body, and I'm going to set its contact bit test bit mask. Use that special operator. I would like this to trigger when there is contact with the red player. Sprite. So I'm going to put that in there. I'm also going to scroll down here. I'm still getting a complaint. No? Okay. Still getting an error. Not happy. Physics body. Oh, oops. Dot physics body. Dot contact test. 
Oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Red. Uh, what did I call that? Player category. That's it. Okay, so now we should be okay. Are you happy, Swift? Playgrounds is happy. Great. So now let's go down here. So I still have this code defining contact type. I'm going to create a new kind of contact. And I'm going to say that this one is called puck hit player. Um, and I'm going to copy this over because it's, again, going to be when the puck sprite hits another sprite. But this time, it's going to be the red player sprite. So I know that this is going to happen when the puck hits the player, and everything else is going to be the same. So we're going to do something different. So else if, I'm going to make this contact type is equal to puck hit player. Oops, puck hit player. Got to watch those typos. So contact type equals puck hit player. And what I'm going to do is take uh, some of this code right here that I know is working. I'll clear that out, make sure that I have my braces lined up. And I'm going to paste that code in here because everything else still should work. Um, and the, the contact, that body A is going to be the puck. So we can see that everything else is, is running. Um, I'm going to leave this here. Um, it's not going to do anything, but I'm going to leave it here until I know that this is working. So, um, I think everything else is good. Let's run the code. Okay, so we're looking to see if we get some better, better movement. It's not exactly doing what we want, but we are getting the right action there. A little bit strange, so it's still not quite doing what we want it to do, is it? Um, so we'll have to do some work to fix that. Um, but now that you can see that this is uh, that this is working, um, we're at least a little closer to this game being fun to play. So I hope this helps a little bit with the idea of using contact events, and uh, that this helps you wrap up this this detail in your game. Have fun.